are listening to Development Works, produced by Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. Hello, friends. I'm Andrew Wilson. And I'm Michael Carlson. Uh, this is Development Works for January 17th, 2016. And on today's upcast, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, here we are in, in the video flesh. Um, so we are going to be recording this episode of Development Works um, because we had some, a lot of exciting stuff go on. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. We're going to start off with our AGM, talk about it. It was a big deal. Uh, huge deal. Huge deal. And then we're going to jump right into our weekly updates. So there we go. For this special edition of the Upcast episode this week with Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses, we've searched through and dug out all of the great highlights uh, from the AGM, the annual general meeting that we had the other weekend. Here's our new human resources manager, Eduardo, talking about strategy and human resources. How well are we doing with our recruitment? So we're currently posting in, say, six, seven different places, but we're not really sure in terms of where are we being successful in terms of those places that we're posting in. But uh, keeping track, if you're posting in places A, B, C, and D, and then you get 100 applicants, where are those 100 applicants coming from? Are they coming from place A or coming from B or C? Out of those 100 applicants, how many are actually relevant? You know, how they have the proper experience? And then you kind of do a triple down effect. Let's throw it over to our communications team, Jalal, Dina, David, and Talini, led by the infamous Carol. I worked in news, and I'm telling you, it was my chance to do things that I will never do again. I was in the Blue Jays locker the last time they won the World Series. I was sent down there, I was supposed to get certain guys, I was new, I was excited, I went down, and they were all naked, and none of them had any names on, and I didn't know who anybody was, and besides the obvious distractions of being around a bunch of professional athletes without their clothes on, nobody would help me because the sports world is really tough, and I'd be like, okay, which one's... Carter, I had no idea. Anyway, that was something I would never get to do again. Yeah. And here's Elizabeth, programming. our health uh, policy manager. Um, uh, paper that I'm working on, it's not really a paper, it's more like a set of pr procedures. So it's a distinct uh, set of guidelines for our scholars program. So uh, I've been working closely with the people who have managed the scholars program up until this point to chart um, uh, the process for um, uh, soliciting uh, scholars, for moving, uh, selecting them, for moving them through the process and getting them into schools. Um, and that sort of the process, the guidelines for it will be uh, finished shortly. Also in a program's policy and applied research, here's our data manager, uh, Anna. Decision making in, 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 in partnership is similar. So basically to do, you need a, a stack bar, it gives you information on the, on the that, that, uh, that's enough. And that's the second part. So it gives you information how you have this much education activities in this province, you have this much youth uh, charities in this province, and blah, blah. So those are the things that still needs to be finished, it needs to be put like in nice colors, nice font, nice everything. But it gives you an idea of what we can do. So the nice thing about this, the data set behind this is not finished. <coughs> but once it will be finished, we'll just run the same script and have the same plot again. Also, there's some great work coming out of our Nurses for Nurses team. Catherine, Nicole, Jackie, Prague, Victoria, thanks so much. And this is Amanda, Director of Strategic Operations. And as well to help in the conversation of flow between programs, legal and finance. So going with legal and finance over some of um, the background and hurdles, we've come up with some few things that we really need to get settled. And who can forget about Ryan, our director of investments, you know, who flew all the way in for this know, event from New York. Accepting my incorporation. So, who, what kind of companies are we not wanting to take money from for ethical reasons? And then we're going to write a piece on it and hopefully get it published and get some kind of brand recognition. 2015 was a special year for Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses for a bunch of reasons, including our first student club out of the University of Toronto Scarborough who are doing some great work to rally students behind our cause. As far as the group is concerned, it's two tiers, so it's the executive, all of, all of us on the same level. And here's Bo, our Director of Programs, Policy and Applied Research. Here's a short clip of a larger presentation that he gave at our AGM. Um, 
So we'll look at a couple examples for this as well. Um, but why this came about is because there's, we would send over these extremely expensive Canadian tractors to places where they didn't work. The technology was not appropriate. We didn't provide training around it. It was too complicated to um, fix with the resources available in those communities. Um, so we wanted, sort of the idea is we create things that can be dealt with locally and that people actually want. Do they even want tractors? Or like, how much time do they spend um, doing something that a tractor would do versus like if we took the same money and put that into something like washing machines, which are really like that changes the dynamic and it also changes who's getting, that changes the time that someone's putting into that. Every year at the AGM, Andrew Wilson goes through a risk analysis with DFD NFN, basically asking the question, what could knock the legs out from underneath us? So this year, the top three threats for programs, policy, and applied research include creating a program that might cause some harm, harm to a volunteer abroad, and student dropout in Nicaragua. In Canadian operations, the top three threats include not following through on promises with the CRA or other legal issues, poor income streams, and any internal drama or politics that we have within the organization. This year's AGM brought in lots of special guests outside of the organization. So here's Funke talking about power and privilege. And then the final two, which I think are the most important two, and actually I think Doctors for Doctors straddles um, the middle of these two, is uh, co-learning, right? So this idea that insiders and outsiders share their knowledge and work together to form action plans and initiatives. So this idea of having community members as being active participants in the discussions of uh, what they want to see change, how they want to see change happen, um, and these kinds of things, and both design models together to move forward. And then we have the last, and I think the most important, is collective action. So this essentially empowers communities or local people to set their own agendas and mobilize and carry it out in the absence of outside facilitators and initiators. Thank you so much to Connor for coming out and talking about his previous experience working with the Canadian Scholarship. It ties in very closely with, this is sort of a program design area, um, but eligibility. So who, who is the ideal kind of candidate for, for this award? Um, and this was a big, a big area at Loran, that was, at the Loran Foundation that was, was always asked. We were a scholarship based on merit. So we were explicitly not looking at financial need as a criteria. Um, and interestingly, we also weren't really looking at grades as a criteria. Your academic kind of performance factored in a little bit, but the, the decision was made over, over the years to really focus on those three character traits of uh, commitment to service, leadership, and character broadly defined. And that was what the selection process was really looking for. Um, and that does it for our highlights of the AGM. Thanks so much to all 50 volunteers who came out over the weekend. We look forward to next year. And on today's Upcast... Holy AGM Batman! With our AGM being held at 545 Sherburn Street uh, and the Center for Social Innovation, or CSI, at Regent Park on January 8th, 9th, and 10th, the three days was a whirlwind of positive change and challenge for DFD NFN. Now, this episode is going to be a special edition for two reasons. So the first one is that we are including video and photos of our team and special guests. And the second is that we're going public with this. Uh, awesome. So volunteers, um, of course, if you can help spread the word uh, through social media, just to let everyone know of the good work we're doing with Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. Now, very lastly, um, we built this podcast about five months back with three very important founding principles. Now, the first one, uh, the first purpose of this upcast was to actually build culture as a team. Um, so this is really talking about who we are and what's going on in our organization um, and bringing everyone in together to a common voice. Um, second, um, we are informing volunteers just updates of everything that's happening within the organization. In this kind of version, we have two really important rules that we go by very strongly. And the first one is no lies, always tell the truth. And the second one is no omissions of truth. Mm. So with that, um, you have our complete honesty uh, as directors of the, of the soon to be charity. Yeah. And that's all the practical stuff. And lastly, uh, the, the third reason for this is that we are documenting what it takes to raise a healthy charity from scratch, which to our knowledge hasn't really been done, not like this. Um, and so we're hoping to contribute that as well. Global knowledge trade. Uh, so let's get on with it. Updates for the week. 
So in programs, policy and applied research, our number one priority right now is actually finding an excellent programs manager to take on the lead of our Nicaraguan communications and partnerships, and as well as management with our other current programs volunteers working on our projects in Nicaragua. Now, as well, we need to formalize plans and create a clearer path for volunteers that want to get involved in the work that we are doing in programs. So example, putting out project tracking sheets for people to see what parts of projects are available for them to work on and who is doing what so we can really coordinate um, with our other projects. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Mike here, uh, the Director of Canadian Operations. So the recent AGM uh, helped crystallize our goals uh, for this year in operations. And so to start off, uh, here are my three goals for operations. So first of all, uh, fundraising. Turns out is not a swear word. It's not a dirty word. Uh, we as an organization need to get out of this mindset uh, and back into a hard set reality that we really do need money to sponsor students. Uh, we need money to help communities in Nicaragua. And you're going to be hearing a lot of this, uh, this vein from me in uh, including how you, yes, you, uh, can actually uh, do this in a creative way and help us raise funds uh, in new and interesting ways. So uh, secondly, fundraising is a top priority in general. Uh, and as well with that, uh, I'm going to be helping out with corporate fundraising, with the events uh, that will run, with campaigns that will run and every tool known to humanity uh, that can uh, bring in fundraising dollars. Mm -hmm. So I, with the help of the entire volunteer team, uh, are going to be raising, and you can hold me to this, $100,000 by the end of this year. So Christmas this year, you can, uh, you can hold me to that and either call me a liar or a person that brought in $100,000. Um, so third, third major priority, hiring is the biggest and the baddest uh, issue that we're, we're tackling as a team um, and we're trying to bring in the bestest uh, volunteer team around. There are about 10 more core positions that we're looking for key individuals with key skill sets. Uh, and then there's dozens of event planners and fundraisers and researchers and skills-based positions uh, that will all work together. So we're going to be able to do some incredible stuff as a team. Uh, so that's one of my biggest priorities. Now, Andrew, uh, I'm going to need some sound effects on this uh, next title here. So here we go. After the AGM, avoiding the void. We'll play with that in post-production. Um, conventionally, just so everyone knows, uh, a major event like our AGM, uh, after it, you might be super jazzed up with all this energy and know where to put it all. So this is where we remind all volunteers uh, to harass your managers and directors. I mean, in the nicest way possible, okay? Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice harassment. Um, <laughs> and really go over the strategic direction of your work group as well as your deliverables. So if you're being held up, if you're waiting for something in your role, uh, just ask, please, just ask. Uh, and speaking of asking, Andrew, can you ask me why I'm so excited? Why are you so excited, Mike? Andrew, I'm so excited because we have a financial team coming together. Oh, man, that is actually really exciting. I'm so excited. Um, oh, good. So uh, because of this, the beginnings of a financial team, this is a group of people who are going to help us organize, uh, develop our finances, our budgets, uh, deal with tax receding, uh, and most importantly, also just financial strategy, uh, because I'm not an expert in that. Neither are you that I know of. So... Um, thanks very much to Chisonga and Amanda Hong uh, for coming out uh, on the weekend uh, and starting this off. Another thing to mention uh, in human resources, again, uh, Andrew mentioned it earlier, but Ellie, uh, the manager of HR, um, who's one of our longest serving volunteers at DFD NFN, uh, has decided she needs more time to focus on some of her other priorities. So she's transitioning over to Eduardo, um, the new HR manager. They've been working together for a while now. Uh, and so goodbye to Ellie. Um, Bye, Ellie. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and hello to Eduardo. Hello, Eduardo. And thank you for joining us uh, on this crazy adventure uh, to help a bunch of people. So over to Andrew for his founders update. So I'm honestly still coming down um, from such a hot AGM that so we hot. had last weekend. So hot. Kind of still recovering from it, mostly emotionally, because um, it was really exciting. But anyways, um, so I found a new role um, in our new organizational structure, which we'll talk a little bit more about next week. Um, but it's 
our organizational structure has changed a lot, and therefore my role has actually changed a lot. And uh, I'm actually going to be taking on more of the role as a founder as opposed to the role of a director or manager that I was doing in the past. Um, where I spent most of my time managing last year, uh, I'm, at, I'm now actually going to divide my time up uh, more so in the following two categories. So the first big one is fundraising. Um, I think I'm a good person to basically sell the story of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and the second one that uh, I'm really going to be prioritizing this year is kind of more strategic partnerships in Canada and also in Nicaragua as well. Um, and of course, that means that we're going to Nicaragua in July. So I'm just calling that right now. Please come. And some reminders for everyone out there in Radio Land. We are still meeting on the first Sunday of every month. But the format has changed a lot. We want to be more respectful of people's time. More on this next episode. But if you're a volunteer with us and you want to see how decisions happen, then please come out uh, on Sunday, February 7th from 4 till 6 p.m. 545 Sherburn. Uh, that's where we live. That's this place. And also a reminder for internal communication. So DFD and NFN is cleaning up our act. Um, we're all going to be getting on the same platform. Um, and really that'll help us build and kind of track projects a little bit better. So that's called Slack and you may get invited to it ASAP. Awesome. And that's everything for this week's episode of Development Works. Thank you for listening and watching. And this is Andrew and Mike signing off. And remember what Curtis uh, actually sent us a link to. And you can totally check this out. It's actually at the bottom of this video. Um, the article is actually called The Reductive Seduction of Other People's Problems. And it's by Courtney Martin. So in the words of Miss Martin, uh, don't go because you've fallen in love with sol solvability. Go because you've fallen in love with complexity. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's really similar to a uh, normal sign off. If you don't make mistakes, uh, you're not working on hard enough problems. If you don't make mistakes, you're not working on hard enough problems. Mm. Mm.